At the end of the specified clearing period, check to make sure your wine is brilliantly clear. The best way to do this is to use your clean, sanitized wine thief to pull a glass full of wine from the carboy. Take the glass into a darkened, but not completely dark, room and shine the beam of a flashlight through it. Don't look into the flashlight because all you'll see is little spots in front of your eyes. Instead, look at the beam of light passing through the wine. You shouldn't actually be able to see the beam itself if the wine is truly clear. If you do see the flashlight beam, that means tiny particles in the wine are reflecting light as it passes through the wine, scattering them and making the beam visible, kind of like dust motes in a sunny room. If your wine is clear, you can proceed to bottling. If it isn't, whatever else you do, don't bottle it. Cloudy wine doesn't magically improve in the bottle, and eventually it'll throw sediment and may change in flavor or aroma over time. Patience and time are the two best antidotes for a cloudy wine. You're going to need 30 bottles and 30 corks to finish your wine. Now, you don't have to buy new bottles, but if you're going to recycle old bottles, they need a thorough cleaning. Soak them overnight in a winemaking detergent, and get a good brush to scrub all the goo out. After that, you're going to need to rinse them. If you have a sink-mounted sprayer, that makes it a lot more convenient. Clean recycled bottles, and even brand new bottles, need to be sanitized with your metabisulfite solution before you use them. While you could do this by pouring a cup of sulfite solution from bottle to bottle, a much better answer is to use an avinatore and a scola bottaghile. Those are funny Italian words for bottle sulfite or pump and bottle draining tree. As you can see, Paul has the bottles rinsed and drained in no time. If you're ever stuck for a gift for your favorite winemaker, these are wonderful. While some folks use hand corkers, which rely on brute power to force corks into a bottleneck, a real treat is an Italian or Portuguese floor corker. These babies make corking as easy as pie, with their self-adjusting bottle platforms and great mechanical advantage. Many shops will loan or rent floor corkers out for a nominal fee. Another helpful tool is a bottling wand, an acrylic rod that attaches to the end of the siphon hose with a little needle valve on the end. It'll allow you to fill the bottles just by dipping the wand into the bottom of the bottle and it reduces splashes and dripping. They're not expensive and they really beat using a hose clamp or your thumb to control the flow of wine into the bottles. Clean and sanitize your siphon rod, hose and siphon filler. Rinse well. Now, if you're concerned about disturbing the sediment in the bottom of the carboy while you're bottling, you can clean and sanitize a primary fermenter or even another carboy, rack the wine into it, and bottle from there. Siphon your wine into bottles. Make sure to leave two finger widths of space between the bottom of the cork and the level of the wine in each bottle. If you don't leave enough space, the cork might come popping back out. Too much space and the air in the bottle could oxidize the wine. Seal it with a good quality cork. Leave the bottles upright for three days before laying them down on their sides for aging. This allows the corks to seal completely. Store the bottles in a dark, cool, temperature stable place. Your retailer will have a selection of attractive labels and capsules that will give your wine a very attractive finished look. Some are even customizable with space for printed messages for gifts and important dates like weddings or anniversaries. The best trick for putting a capsule on top of a wine bottle is to shrink them on with a steam from a kettle. You could use a hair dryer, but that's pretty slow. And a hot air paint stripper works great, but I always wind up scorching the counter. Kettles really do work very quickly and very well. And that's it. You're officially a winemaker. <sighs> Try and wait at least a month before you open the first bottle. And remember, in six months it's going to improve a lot. And some of the wines will take at least a year before they show their best. But the first time you try it, you're going to be proud to say, I made this. Cheers. <laughs>